Record and uh, officially welcome you all to today's live market analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. As always, we uh, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer, uh, understanding that trading any financial instrument carries inherent risk. And uh, most importantly, that the views expressed by me today are solely mine. Uh, they're not representative of opinions of Tick Mill. So now we've got the uh, disclaimer out of the way. Let's just quickly uh, give you an overview of who I am. For those of you here for the first time, uh, my name is Patrick Munley. I've, uh, I've actually been involved in the financial markets now for 15 years. Uh, after I graduated from university, joined a consulting firm in the city, left that firm, did a startup with a couple of fellow employees. Uh, that went through some pretty rapid growth. And after a four to five year spell, I cashed in my stake. And so I found myself with, uh, with some capital and some time on my hands. And so I decided to explore my passion for markets. I initially started day trading the S&P 500. And, uh, and as, as is often the case with, with new traders, um, I caught some very uh, lucky early breaks, started to make some uh, solid and then really quite some significant gains. But as is often the case, um, that, uh, that beginner's luck runs out. And it did for me. It, uh, it meant that I gave back everything I'd made and I then took a six figure hit on my personal capital. So at that point I decided I needed a uh, sanity check and, um, and I needed to take a step back and see if I could actually make a consistent income from the markets. And so I started to think about looking for a mentor, did some networking, got introduced to a chap in the US, worked with him extensively for uh, 18 months, two years. He uh, upped my technical game, but more importantly, upped my mental game. It was a period during which I became far more self-aware and, uh, and understood the, uh, the absolute necessity for um, having uh, mental balance, I guess is the best term, uh, for when you are, uh, are engaging the markets. So um, after, that, after, I, after I worked with him, I developed a uh, trade plan, a business plan, I back tested it, forward tested it, and, uh, and came back to the markets with my own capital in uh in 2008 and um obviously that was a pretty tumultuous year um, but uh, managed to trade through that and came out uh positive and um i've actually delivered positive annual returns um since 2008 the reason you can see performance for 2013 is from 2013 to date sorry is that um during the period the, those first five years uh, of trading i got uh, i caught the attention of, of some family and friends who wanted a piece of the action. And so I set up a managed account service and um, I've been trading the managed account service since 2013. And this is the public data with respect to that performance. Um, and like I say, my, my focus really is, is on trading excellence in terms of really focusing on my process. I'm not, uh, I'm not thinking about the financial gains. I'm really thinking about uh, executing my trading strategy with, uh, with excellence. And so, um, as I often say, you know, my, my focus is really on process over, over outcome. And, and certainly, I, uh, I'm not uh, emotionally invested um, in the outcome of individual trades or, or even a string of trades. My, my real focus is on the next hundred trades, because I know that if I adhere to my trading plan, uh, manage my risks correctly, that over an extended series of outcomes, my edge will... Uh, will demonstrate itself and, it, and that's what it has done. And as you can see here, most important figures for me on this, this chart, on, the, on this page are um, my average winning month is 7.96% versus an average losing month of 2.4%. So if you extrapolate that out, you can see that on average, I'm making about two or three times what I risk. Um, so apart from my, my trading activity, which is largely end of day strategy, um, I also have obviously a, a, res, a market resident at Ticknell, where I provide a daily market outlook, <coughs> along with a, um, a 
trade of the day or setup that I'm watching. And uh, you can subscribe to that and get, uh, and get access to those and they're delivered to your inbox on a daily basis. Um, the other passion project really I'm involved in is FX Career Swap, which, um, which is a, a trading development business whereby we take retail trading t talent, develop them and help them overcome what is the biggest hurdle for, uh, for many retail traders and that is uh, capitalization. So once you've been through the development process, we actually at the end of that then give you a live funded account um, to trade at zero personal risk. And what it means is that you have uh, the capital in place that allows you to adhere to professional risk management strategies without over leveraging and blowing your account. We, um, if anyone is interested in that, I'm happy to pop a link into the chat. We actually have a, uh, a two week free trial um, to that, that uh, trade pro program um, where you get daily access to me. And, uh, and you can see it's basically an opportunity to look over the shoulder really of a, of a professional trader and see, uh, see, see how I manage uh, my business. So uh, that gives you an idea of where I'm coming from. I uh, just can see in the chat, full window. I'm, I'm not sure what you mean, Tim. Um, is anyone else having an issue with, with the visual? I think maybe you might, um, you might have to log out and, and log back in, Tim. Okay, so let's, uh, let's crack on and start looking at the markets. First of all, as always, we're gonna look at some flow and sentiment data. This is from Credit Agricole, where they give their, uh, an FX positioning update on a weekly basis that I share with my, my trading team. And basically, the, 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 the feed for all the, 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 uh, the, 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 what we're looking at in the markets at the moment is we're looking at a move away from the dollar. Um, and this is something I've talked about at length. And, and I think we are just potentially in the very nascent early stages of what could be a protracted um, move away from the dollar. And so um, the, the trade at the moment is probably a little bit crowded. Uh, I think he means you can see slides. And, yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's just, uh, that, that's fine. I'm, it doesn't matter if you've seen slides. Um, so uh, what, we're, what we're looking at is a, a move um, away from the dollar, ultimately, a structural shift. Um, certainly, we've, we've, run, we've run a bit now in terms of the euro. And um, like I've mentioned before, I think we can see the potential for a correction developing. But I, my personal perspective at this stage is that we are, uh, you know, the euro is to be, to be bought on dips. Um, HSBC did a, um, a survey of their, uh, their trading clients. And you can see that uh, over the next six to 12 months, that certainly this, this bearish uh, emphasis on the dollar is starting to take hold. Um, one of the charts I wanted to share with you today is this is the S&P 500. This, uh, this purple line is the S&P 500 from 2008-2009 uh, and the 2009 low. And um, whilst many have been talking about uh, a 1929 or 1930 crash type perspective, um, you can see here, if we, uh, this is overlaid with our current price action in the S&P 500. And we can certainly see the similarities in terms of the correction. Uh, sorry, the, 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 the bottoming process that we have seen um, with the S&P. The, obviously, the, the, the scenario is, is similar to that of 2009 when the Federal Reserve stepped in. This time, uh, the Federal Reserve have, have stepped in on a massive scale. And, uh, and this is what's causing this melter in terms of equities. Now, that, the reason why I, I talk about this is that um, this has uh, implications for the, for the dollar. This is the dollar index when we, um, when the markets bottomed in 2009, you can see we went through uh, an initial leg lower in the dollar. And I think that's where we are at the moment in terms of, um, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the opportunity with the dollar. I think when this first leg down and corrections higher at this stage are to be sold. Um, and like I've mentioned before, the dollar works in cycles, quite pronounced cycles, 16 year cycles. And, uh, and it would appear we have, uh, we've topped out here in terms of the dollar. One more chart there to show you uh, where we can see the dollar into a new secular bear move or bear, bearish cycle. And there are a lot of other drivers behind that, certainly in terms of uh, US China trade tensions, the mass flooding of the market in terms of dollars from the Federal Reserve and the potential that, uh, that 
Vice President Biden becomes president in the in the fall, and we see and we see a, a continued uh, trend lower in terms of the dollar. So let's jump into some charts here. I'm uh, I'm not going to keep you guys uh, and girls too long today. I don't know where you're based, but I'm uh, I'm in Mallorca here, and it's it's 40 degrees, and so I'm looking to get to the beach. So let's uh, let's whip through this stuff. Um, start with the dollar index. Uh, this is the equal weighted dollar index, the Dow Jones dollar index. So it's equal weighted versus the um, euro, the sterling, the yen and the Australian dollar. And uh, you can see we're sitting right at support here and we are attempting, uh, this is a third test of this, this prior low here. And it looks like today we might be looking to put in a, a short term bottom here. And what I'd be looking for is certainly a, a retest of this descending trend line resistance, but potentially we move into more of a, a range environment for the summer. We could be back up into this sort of area here, um, setting up a potential head and shoulders type scenario. Um, August has a tendency to be a relatively good month for, um, for the dollar from a seasonal perspective. And it tends to be a, a, a month where we see consolidation in terms of equity markets. So this would fit that pattern, um, but certainly we get up into this trend line resistance. Any bearish reversal patterns here, and, um, and the, you know, shorts would, would certainly be, be interesting, but I'd anticipate uh, a correction to develop now in the dollar. If we look at the DXY, this is the broader dollar index, and I've, uh, I've outlined some, some scenarios here. Again, we're testing just, just into these prior lows, it's 94.65, the trend line support here that's broke. So I can see it's trading back up into there, and then we probably consolidate during the summer, um, and then into that September, October time when we've got the elections, uh, uh, you know, the elections heating up, then I'm certainly looking for another leg lower in the dollar. So any moves back in to test this, um, this trend line support broken now, act as resistance, bearish reversal patterns here will, uh, will be selling opportunities. Similar to the idea I just talked about here in terms of the equal weighted index getting up into that make potential for a, a head, and, head and shoulders type scenario. We could see the same situation here in the equal weighted index. It's hard to see at this point what would be the catalyst for, uh, for such an exaggerated move. At this point, I pre prefer my base case scenario is that we trade this type of pattern here and, uh, and ultimately are heading lower. And, um, and I can see us trade, I mean, we certainly should be testing the, uh, the trend line support here um, into, into the, uh, the fall. Swissy. Uh, looking for the Swiss seat to get a test down into this uh, projected descending trend line support and uh, looking for a bounce there. Nothing to do at this stage in the Swiss seat. Um, the Euro, obviously, like I said, I'm looking for um, a potential correction here, which we can see there's a potential that we put in a tweezer top here. We're testing the 161 extension of the prior corrective move. And we're also sitting at the monthly R2, midpoint of the projected channel. So this would be a, a, a natural place where we could get a correction. So for me, what I, what I need to see for, to, to be able to deploy short positions here will be a close back below this volume waste average price. Now, obviously, uh, with Thursday today, Fridays and Mondays tend to be, from a, from a statistic statistical perspective, uh, they tend to offer the higher, highest probability of seeing a, seeing a top or a bottom in terms of the euro. So we'll see, we might consolidate here today, uh, get a, an inside day and then break lower um, Friday or Monday. But certainly we could get a pullback um, to test ascending trend line support now, coming in at this 114 area. Um, and ultimately what I'm looking for is that we test, get up higher to test the equality objective. This is the equality objective versus this swing here. So this is an equidistant swing. So I'm looking for 118.39 uh, as a, the, the near-term objective. Then I see the potential for some consolidation similar to what we saw back down here. But ultimately I'm looking higher in the Euro. Uh, 120 would seem to be a, a reasonable upside objective and, um, and potentially up into the 122 area. But in the, in the near term, I am looking for a potential for a corrective pullback. But like I said, those, that corrective pullback, whilst I'll tactically trade it on the short side, I'll, um, I'll certainly be looking then to add, uh, add long positions once we get a, a reversal setup. If we break the ascending trend line support, then the next downside objective for me will be the quality swing here. So the last corrective move we saw so again, that, would, that doesn't take us meaningfully lower, it takes us back into these prior highs here. So we could see 
Um, and, uh, and like I say, what I'm watching for then is once we get down into this area, will be bullish reversal patterns. This is daily time frame, obviously, this is the time frame I trade. So um, bullish reversal patterns to set long positions, ultimately looking as an interim upside objective, this 118, and then on to, on to 120 as we head into uh, September, October, November time. But for now, look, uh, look for a pullback, I think, is, uh, is a reasonable uh, probability. And, uh, and then trade that correction and then look to uh, re <coughs> re re reposition on the long side for this move up into the 118 area. Euro yen is also an interesting juncture. We've got a potential double top here. We've got some really nice um, momentum divergence as well. So again, it's got some work to do here to get back down below the, uh, the VWAP, so that's 123.20. So 70 or 80 pips uh, if, we, if we do see a rollover today. More likely than not, what we'll see is consolidation. Then we'll get the rollover. Like I say, Friday, Monday would be the, the ideal times for that. And then we have uh, we have an opportunity then to do something on the short side in the euro yen. Got a channel here. So I'd expect, expect us to get back down into this <laughs> 122 area. And again, from there, we'll see how we trade. If we get bullish reversal patterns, then uh, the long positions will be warranted. And I think we're going could be up into the 129s in terms of the, uh, the euro yen. But like, like with the euro, happy to trade it on the short side from a tactical perspective, but structurally, I'm looking to be long the euro. Um, trading euro CAD here um, into the uh, range resistance and the equality swing, ABCD here, 155.27. Looks like we're gonna, we are going to roll over here today. Uh, obviously, we wait to see the close, um, New York close for, uh, for putting positions on. But uh, certainly we're in range resistance. We've achieved the equality objective. We are uh, rolling over in terms of momentum studies. So if we get a close back through um, this 154.50 area, then short positions uh, will be deployed there. Euro Aussie, looks like we're potential double bottom here. RSI Stochastic would prefer to see that down below 20, but um, certainly this uh, keeps, it's in fitting. You'll get, you'll, you can see the theme here in terms of uh, Euro strength. Euro Kiwi at the central tendency, the vol bands have flattened out here, so we could certainly see a, an equality move. If we get a green close here, then uh, you can see an equality, still, still considered really a correction within the range, but certainly we could, uh, we could be trading from this 7380 area up into the 176 area, obviously higher beta currency there, the Euro Kiwi. Euro Sterling, still looking, uh, still looking strong here. At, at resistance, but we're starting to fill, we're starting to work our way through the orders here in terms of the euro sterling, and we can again see this back up into the 93 area in terms of the projected channel. Uh, sterling itself, cable, looking for a test of the equality objective. I posted this in the chart of the day a few days ago. But if we are going to, if the if the dollar is going to get a bit of strength here in the interim, then we could uh, we could certainly see a pullback in sterling. Let's bring in the uh, trend line. So, you know, it, as we head into um, August here, we could see sterling come back down, retest trendline support for then making its move higher to, uh, to test into these prior 131 area will be a, a reasonable upside objective for sterling. Um, so keeping an eye on that. Uh, sterling Kiwi. This one, I've, I'm gonna show you another chart. Um, this one is sitting at a very interesting um, position with respect to the monthly time frame. So this is the monthly chart here on this right hand side. We're sitting right at this trend line support. Now, if we look at the daily time frame, we, um, we're putting in a potential double bottom. We've got huge momentum divergence here. The only thing we haven't really got going in our favor is the RSI stochastic is negatively orientated. But from a price pattern perspective, if we get a close back through 91.70, then that, uh, that could set up a, quite a meaningful correction here in, in uh, Sterling Kiwi. Let's just get some targets in place. So we look at a symmetry swing objective. So we can certainly see Sterling trade, uh, Sterling Kiwi trade back up in here as, as the final corrective swing before completing uh, the last leg to the downside. As is often the case when we get these, these big runs, um, we tend to re, uh, retest the, the low, the cycle low. So what I'd be looking for is um, a move 
If we can get a green close today, so we'll need to close through 91.50, 91.60, but we'd have a nice bullish uh, rejection here of this double bottom, and that could set up a move uh, to put us back up into the 195 area. So that's one I'm certainly watching into the close this evening. Uh, Sterling Aussie, similar position here, testing third test of, of this descending trend line support, and we've got that triple divergence here. So again, Sterling Aussie back through this VWAP, 178.95 say, uh, sets up a move to, to get us up into this 180 area as, uh, as the next swing or corrective swing in, uh, in the Sterling Aussie, obviously downtrend month, monthly VWAP is bearish. Aussie, so we tested into the 127, uh, 161 extension of what we'll call the, uh, this last corrective swing. And you can see we've got some decent negative divergence developing here, potentially looking at a three candlestick pattern to as a, uh, a rejection of, uh, of the, we're sitting at the weekly R3 as well, 7160. So if we get a close back through 7090, then, uh, then certainly we could trade back down into the vol support here at 68, low 6820, let's say, um, before consolidating, like I say, for the summer. So we're, the, today's going to be, today and tomorrow really are going to be quite pivotal for a bunch of these, uh, bunch of these charts. Aussie Kiwi also sitting at resistance. And again, note, we have that uh, negative divergence. So for this Aussie Kiwi, what you'd want to see is a close back through 7580 um, to confirm the pattern. And then you target vol support back down to 7329. Aussie CAD, Post this is the chart hit this morning. We're seeing the follow through. We've got, uh, again, triple divergence. We've got these three pushes into a high and we're correcting lower now. So if we get a close at or lower than we're currently trading, which will turn the, the daily VWAP bearish, then I certainly see us trading down into that 93.20. Kiwi, similar story to the others. Haven't quite retested this uh, year, uh, last year's high, which would have been the ideal. Um, objective, but certainly we've got momentum divergence here on this last high. So if we get a close back through uh, 66.15, um, then the key we could be, it could be a nice short here, uh, get us back down into 64.50 before we uh, reach another decision point where they can hold the trend line, then trade back through uh, that 68 high, or we break the trend line support and then we would talk, then we'd be looking at some quality objectives. So the last meaningful uh, correction, sorry which actually would put us into this area. So this is going to be, this is going to be a pivotal test for the Kiwi, really. If, uh, if we do close red today, look for a price to retest this 64.20 area. Uh, bullish reversal patterns there would offer a nice risk reward in terms of longs to, uh, to target this 67.60 high. Uh, what else have I got? Kiwi CAD. Again, we've been tracking this pattern. I've, I've kept you, kept you um, uh, informed of this, and it looks like now we're going to see the anticipated correction. We've got again that nice negative divergence, nicely structured pattern, and we're getting the red close tonight in terms of the, the VWAP. So you can see we've got a bunch of these pairs that are all really testing some pivotal um, pivotal places at the moment. The only trade I've actually got on at the moment is CAD Yen that I'm long and I'm trading up my stops. I've locked in uh, 60 pips profit on this one now. I'm looking ideally for it to test this descending trend line of resistance. Uh, 8061, but uh, we're uh, we're holding at the moment the equality objective, and so uh, so just tightening up the stops, locking in some profit on that one, and um, just finally let's see where we are with the S and P. I'm looking for a, a corrective pullback in terms of the S and P, but certainly the pattern looks quite clear now that we will uh, test and, and probably breach this uh, the prior highs at 33.97, as we've already seen that the Nasdaq do that. Nasdaq looks like it's also running out of a bit of steam here. We've got negative um, divergence. So I like I, I posted this uh, on the blog the other day, I think we can certainly see a pullback, test this uh, 1035 area. And last but not least, let's see where gold is at. So gold, looking for gold to test up into this 1900 area, uh, this projected uh, ascending trend line resistance, and then see uh, another pullback in gold um, probably to retest this uh, 1820, this prior, this prior highs as support. Okay, so um, that's that's what I'm basically looking at in terms of opportunities and uh, and 
watching the close tonight really to see if some of those uh, some of those patterns confirm but certainly i think we're at a uh, a pivotal juncture here for for a bunch of pairs certainly the euros and uh, and some of these commodity currencies as well look uh, look to be in some interesting places but like always uh, i'm waiting for the close tonight to get confirmation okay traders are there any questions you can either uh, raise your hand and I can unmute your mic or you can uh, post a question in the chat. If you, uh, if you don't have a question, if you type an N in the chat, that would be, um, that would be helpful. Tim, uh, these are proprietary indicators, Tim. You, you, can, uh, you can drop me a message through LinkedIn and uh, I can let you know uh, how you can get hold of them. They're, 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 the, the majority of it is, is to do with um, volume weighted average price, Tim. Okay, I'll just give you another uh, 30 seconds here. Any questions? Okay, uh, Farhan. Hi, Farhan, can you hear me? Have you got a, a microphone, Farhan? No. Okay. Uh, Tahir, do you have a microphone? Hi, Tahir. No. I can see you've got questions, but um, I can't hear you, and um, I can't uh, see you. So, uh, uh, no. Why were we? So, she was. Okay. <laughs> What's going on there? Um, okay. If there aren't any other questions, uh, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Like I say, keep an eye on some of these. Uh... First time I'm here, just want to say thank you for having a logical run through. Thank you, Mark. You appreciate the comments. Uh, Infinite smart. Uh... Uh, I'm not sure what uh, what that question refers to, Infinix. So again, when can we, uh, I'll, um, one second guys, one second. Uh, one second, I'm just gonna post a link for you. With me, bear with me. Okay, indicators. I'm going to post a link in the chat now for any of you who are interested in the indicators. Uh, yes, Mr. Ban, I am looking for a correction in the uh, in the DXY. Um, I'll just go back to the chart for you if in case you missed it. So uh, I'm looking for this type of uh, scenario to develop in the DXY. Um, but again, if we take out these lows, then, uh, then all bets are off and this could become a quite an aggressive move lower. Um, they're, they're not, they're, um, they're volume weighted average price bands uh, to here. They're not, uh, they're not Bollinger bands, function slightly differently. Okay, any other questions with respect to Chao? Okay, uh, Daniel. Uh, hi, Daniel. Hello? You got a, a microphone, Daniel? Okay, uh, can you hear me now, right? I can, yeah. Yeah, okay, so um, uh, I noticed on your uh, uh, on your graphs, um, yeah. 
Well, first thing is first, uh, Nimet, um, I, I joined late into this conversation, so maybe the, the question I'm, I'm trying to ask you, maybe you have already answered it, but I'm going to ask anyway. So I was curious, what kind of indicators are you using? I'm using uh, volume weighted average price. Oh, uh, okay. Um, Just posted the link that it explains all about the indicators, the links in the chat. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, thank you, sir. No problem at all. Thanks for the question, Daniel. Okay. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to wrap this one up here and uh, I'll catch you all same time next week. Thanks very much. Bye now.